want again i want to thank uh, god almighty on your behalf and uh, i appreciate you i appreciate what god is doing in our midst so we're going to continue we'll come back to um, testimony and thanksgiving and we're going to uh, quickly take the uh, a continuation of the teaching that we have been on a series on the love of god so today we have uh, two of our sisters uh, mommies <laughs> who will be talking on the topic, the love of God. Um, Sister Comfort, Ubon Apavio, and Sister Gertrude Edemetro. So uh, we're going to start right away. They have a short five minutes to just hit the points as we continue in this delving into this higher life, the life of the love of God. So I'm going to start first with Gertrude. Gertrude, over to you. Well, thank God for today. And I just want to thank God so much for this month, May, that God has brought us to this month. I have been very blessed by the last, last month, the theme we had on the love of God. This particular important theme is taken from Romans 5, 5, and it says, and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. And the love of God is so great and it has been demonstrated you know, in the Easter. We had Easter uh, in April when Jesus came. Jesus came, he was there with God. He came to this simple earth. He died for me and for you. And he was raised again from the dead. And that is a demonstration of God's love. This love is not that we first love God. God first loved us. John 3, 16 captures that old, that he gave his beliefs in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So because of the love God has for me, God has for you, he sent his son. And Jesus didn't refuse to come. Jesus took it upon himself to come and save mm -hmm. me. And that is really mind-blowing that Jesus came. And because of that, I have a relationship back and I can enjoy that love. And the love doesn't end there. Just like he has said that we should love God with all our heart, love others as we love ourselves. So we should love God because God has loved us and then we love others and we also love ourselves. So this, <laughs> this theme has been so important to me and the, the, the pastor said we should summarize it, <laughs> but there's no thing I can get to That Romans 8, 8 from verse 28. I'll read it from my Bible, from NIV Bible. It says, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. That what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not always along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those 
whom God has chosen. It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither hides nor death, nor anything else in our creation would be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This, this passage, we thank God for this passage. It has so much, but thank there are two you. things, two verses that really stood out here for me. The first verse is verse 32. It says that, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? God didn't spare his son, and Jesus didn't mind Thank coming to death. So much. We're going to wrap up here to the second verse. Okay. And then the second verse is, is uh, verse um, 24. 38, it says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor either angels nor anything can separate us from the love of God. So nothing can separate us, can separate me, can separate you from this love that we have in God. So I just want to thank God so much that he has done so much for me and so much for you too. And we should hold on to him, onto this love and nothing else, you know, the love of God is everything in our lives. Thank in you. Jesus' name. Hey, okay, thank, thank God. You. Thank you so much. That was very inspiring. And thank you for that scripture, Romans chapter 8, from verse 28 to 38. God bless you. So we're going to go straight to um, uh, listening to Sister Comfort Aquabio also give us a summary uh, what resonates with her on the love of God. My family of God, you are highly welcome and glory be to God who has made it possible that we are here. You know me, I love some. So, <laughs> The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. The Lord is good. Tell it that others may know. Tell of his goodness and tell of his love. Tell of his kindness that others may know. The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. Hallelujah. Amen. Please do you summarize everything. Please tilt your, tilt your equipment a little so we can aha better. That's great. That's I am so happy. I, I feel so great. I feel so honored. And I thank God Almighty who has made this platform possible and made us to be here to talk of the love of God. Pastor, I thank you so greatly. You have said a lot. You have said what the love of God is. You have said what the love of God is not, how we could experience it, the characteristics of God's love. 
And I will not stop. Uh, I, 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 I think I will say I cannot summarize this without giving my testimony. I never knew today will be that day. Oh my God, how great and how good is your love. On that fateful day, my sisters and brothers, I went out to do what I have been doing for the past 40 years of my life. And I have been praying, God, I want to step backward for you to step forward for me. On that day, and I decide, I, I think I can do this by my own work, the work of righteousness. So I went out, um, I started, but the group that I went out with, something happened. After about 30 to 45 minutes, they left. They told me, are you still going to stand and preach? I said, yes. I, I, I just came out. So while I was there trying to preach, a young woman walked up to me, asked me a question. Why don't you people cry when somebody dies? I said, young woman, thank you for the question. Not that we do not cry, but we keep to the apostles word in uh, First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 13 and 14, there, that scripture I said, but I do not want you to be ignorant brethren concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so will bring with him, those who slept in Jesus. So after I've read that scripture to the lady, I said, this demonstrates the hope of resurrection, demonstrates God's love for human. And how does God show this love? By giving his son, Jesus Christ. And I said, John 3, 16 confirmed it. God loved the world so much. He gave his only begotten son. After I have spoke this, I told this lady, this love has no race. This love has no uh, limit. This love is for the whole world. As my tone of preaching stopped from how I normally preach. I was talking of the grace of God. I was talking of the love of God. I was talking of the mercy of God. Oh my God. Why do we focus on something else rather than talking the love of God? I stood there, I preached the love of God, the grace of God until before I could realize it was gone. I left with joy, hoping I will do more of this. I was talking of the joy of God. I was talking of the grace of God. The spirit of God, could I could see freedom i shouted freedom when i came to the house i said freedom my son said mommy you don't want to take responsibilities i said no i have freedom Free i couldn't know how to explain but i told him now if you ask me are you a child of god i will say affirmatively yes this led me to that uh, romance that my sister is reading. I could see the spirit bear witness that we are children of God. I have been adopted. Wow, the love of God, my dear, in summary, you have said something. Love of God is made possible by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. My prayer is God, open the eyes of your children, bless them with your Holy Spirit that they could see your love. Your love of God admit them into your family. The love of God drives away their fear. The love of God opened their eyes. The love of God want them to be like God, transformed to Jesus Christ. And you will want to show this love. You want to imitate God. How Romans, uh, Galatians, that Galatians chapter 5. Uh, chapter 5, if we start from verse 16, my dear, you could see when you are walking with spirit, 
you will not think of what is in the flesh. The spirit drives away fear. He said, I said, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lost against the spirit. That is Galatians 5, 16. If you read it, you will see when you have God's Holy Spirit, the work of the flesh will perish. You will be filled with the fruitage of the Holy Spirit. And what love is, that characteristic of Roma, um, Corinthians first chapter 13 from 8 flows in your life. My sister, my brother, I am so happy. Please, that is the Holy, don't leave a tongue, leave everything. Let God's Holy Spirit give you that first fruitage of the spirit, love, yeah. it will manifest in your life yeah. in yeah. every other activity. Yeah. Thank you, my yeah. brother. Let's glory, let praise, let Holy Spirit reign with his children forever yeah. and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Ma, for that powerful testimony and the message crowned it with the love of God is given to us by the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit in us, let's live by that love. God bless you so much. Amen. Thank you. Now we're going to pray again because today is first Sunday. But that prayer will now be going with your testimonies. So we'll take... Uh, few testimonies, very prompt to the point, what God has done for you. And I'm actually believing God. You know, we've taught a lot. We had teaching on uh, uh, victory, uh, mountains of victory. So everyone who has connected upon this platform and you have heard these teachings, you are victorious. Our sister I read there, we are more than conquerors. So we want to take your testimony, your thanksgiving to the Lord now. You have a testimony, you have thanksgiving, you will share. Please, one minute straight to the point what the Lord has done and what you're thanking God for. So feel free, open your line and speak. Yes, my brother. I one cannot minute. fail to thank I cannot fail to thank God for his blessings upon me and my family. Bringing us this far into the second quarter of the year in good health i have every reason to thank him for what he has done for me and for my family my children my husband everything i have seen the goodness of god in the family so i thank god for that We join you to thank God for your life and for your family. I think it's evident your testimony of the evangelism that uh, you had and, and, and the, 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 the Holy Spirit taking over, leading you to preach the love of God, the mercy, the grace of God is wonderful. Anybody else? Anybody else? Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, I will just share and then we'll continue in the teaching and then we'll uh, pray more. Um, I thank God who has sustained us, sustained uh, the, his word, the teaching upon this platform. And there are many other specific things the Lord has done. You see, when we talk about the love of God and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, I, took, I remember telling us that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is for us to practice. And it's developed by practice because it's already given to us by the Spirit of God. So to the extent you yield yourself, you see the manifestation. Uh, something happened that uh, I, I, I was supposed to be very angry. And of course, um, I didn't, it was almost uh, looking hopeless. But I just prayed and said, God, help me by your love, pour your love upon my heart and help me to handle this thing. Show me how to go about this. And that was it. 
the Spirit of God just led me to call the person and then have a discussion. And the discussion went so well that a solution, we arrived at a solution. So something that would have been a, a quarrel was resolved very peacefully and God has continued to walk that solution through. So there will always be opportunity for us to practice what we say. Let us be sensitive in the spirit. And God will give us victory in Jesus' name. So no matter what it is, just trust God, the Lord will guide you. So we want to pray for the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the testimonies that we have brought to you. Thank you for the message, the word of your love that your daughters have shared. And thank you for all the thanksgiving that we have given to you. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Our God, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And I, ask, and I add all desire. And so I pray, Lord, that you will do your perfect will and your purpose for our lives. And bless your vessels that have, you have used to share your word today. And for all the thanksgiving that have been given to you and testimonies, Lord, I pray that you greatly enlarge those testimonies. Bigger, mightier, greater testimonies will abound unto them in the, uh, next time in the name of Jesus Christ. And so our Father and our God, we thank you for teaching us your love by your Holy Spirit. Now, as we look further in and deeper into your word, into the topic, the love of God, Lord, we pray that you continue to guide us and teach us and give us listening ears, give us a heart of understanding, Lord, that, that this word will change our hearts, change our life, transform us into that glorious image of the sons and daughters of God as you have proposed, in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So we want to continue with our teaching on the love of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And as our sister Gertrude reminded us that our text for this topic, the love of God, is from Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Praise the name of the Lord. So far, we have covered a lot of things in this teaching. And we should now have understanding of the love of God. And we should also understand the characteristics of love and not just understanding it and begin to examine our own lives, whether some of the things we do are actually love. Number three, we have seen the distinction between the human motivated ambitions and selfishness and the love of God, which is unconditional, benevolent, also, we have seen that love is the highest hierarchy of life, as we share. So, uh, we have learned that love is the highest hierarchy of life. So, our focus is to achieve, attain, reach that pinnacle of life, because love is the greatest. Praise the name of the Lord. So very quickly, you can see my screen now. You remember what we shared, looking at the, this circle that we are, everything happens in this physical world, in this uh, physical dimension. And this, these are the realms of life that impacts the physical life. We must appreciate what this is. 
So those who seek material pursuits, they acquire economic power, they, it will only have effects manifest in this physical. Everything is used in this physical. It, those who go logical, scientific, and all that, all is to manifest in this physical. Spiritual manifest in this physical. It's only love that has both this physical manifestation and then beyond this physical manifestation, we will rest and be with God in his kingdom because God is love. That's what this is demonstrating. So love is beyond this physical. Love impacts this physical while we are here. So when we live in love, we are lifted beyond all these levels to the God level because we are children of God and God is love. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is perfect. That is complete. Praise the name of the Lord. So with this in mind, we want to continue. The teaching on the love of God. So we want to then go into living in love, the practical steps of it. That's what we want to continue to focus on. So our reference and our focus is living in love. In fact, the way I would title this practical steps, living in love, will be to say, back to the love of God, back to the love of God. Let us look at Luke chapter 10, verses 27 through 37. But I'll just read verse 27 for a start. Verse 27, Luke chapter 10, verses 27 to 37. That's what we're going to look at. Verse 27. So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. We have established that love is a command from God. John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35, Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, that you also love one another as I have loved you. So we are to love God, and we are to love ourselves, and we are to love our neighbor, ourselves. Love is a command. A command means you have to obey, but you can choose not to obey, but without, that is not without a consequence. Love is a command. A command means you have to obey. We have to obey. There is no uh, option. However, you, I, we can choose not to obey, but not without a consequence or consequences. So please pay serious attention to this because this is the secret to entering into eternal life. This is the secret to enjoying that everlasting kingdom of God. Like our sister said, let's focus on love. Let's focus on the mercy and the grace of God. Praise the name of the Lord. When it comes to this point, let me make it clear, God does not force anyone. Just like I showed you that hierarchy. You may get to the spiritual level and you're very spiritual. You're seeing the manifestation and yet lack love. God is not going to force you. So this is where some people miss it. Because when people are operating in that spiritual level and they're seeing results and the pressures and the, 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 not just the pressures, the praises of men, 
the benefits of those results begin to come, then if you're not strong, understanding that your life is higher, you are supposed to operate at a higher level than just the manifestation of the spiritual in the physical realm that people see, the demonstration of the spiritual gifts in the physical realm. Just like 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Taurus, even though I speak with the tongue of angels, but have not love, I am nothing. So this is where some people miss it. Having grown big and large in the spiritual, they allow their own ambitions to cut off their love. Love for God love for themselves and love for humanity. This is the highest form of love. So it is a choice and you have to choose to live in love because it is not an easy and simple life to live. Praise the name of the Lord. To live in love, you have to choose. It is about making a conscious decision to love no matter what. As that Matthew chapter 10 verse 27 sets the standard. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might, and your neighbor as yourself. It is everything within us. You can abbreviate that pa passage to HSSM, heart, soul, strength, mind. And then you add N and S. Yourself and your neighbor. A neighbor as yourself. N for neighbor, S as self. N, S, or S, N, self and neighbor, whichever way, so you will remember. So brothers and sisters, when we are talking about living in love, the practical steps we want to look at, we are saying we want to start living in love. We want to live in the love as Jesus lived. We want to just be exactly what God our Father has created us to be. So you must live in love. Praise the name of the Lord. To be able to do this, you must embrace the three components of love. This is what we would deal with today, the three components of love. What are the three components of love? Compassion, forgiveness, sacrifice. Again, the three components of love. Compassion, forgiveness, sacrifice. If you don't make up your mind and say, I must embrace and live and practice these three components of love, you will not be able, even though you have received the spirit, to practice and exercise the true love of God as it should be. So compassion is to be sympathetic. Consciousness of others, sympathetic consciousness of others, Others distress together with a desire to alleviate that they are distressed. Compassion is sympathetic consciousness of others distress together with a desire to alleviate their distress. So you've seen in John chapter 11, verse 35, we looked at it last time, Jesus wept. And in verse 36, the Jews said, see how much he loved him. See how much Jesus loved Lazarus. Compassion. In Luke chapter 33, uh, Luke chapter 10, rather, so forgive me, Luke chapter 10, verses 33 and 37, uh, 33 to 37, rather, which is the portion we are reading. So here, after Jesus asked this lawyer, I say, what is written in the law? What is your reading? And he read, that portion, verse 27, that we just said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus answered him, he said, do this, you will live. And the 
employer who asked Jesus this question and said, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered him and told him a, a story. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. 31. Now, by chance, a certain priest, a priest, a priest like myself, a priest like you, because you know, in the new covenant, we have been made kings and priests to the Most High God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So a priest came, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. How many times have we met? Have we been like this priest? 32. Likewise, a Levite, a Levite is a minister of God. When he arrived at the place, came and looked. Ah, this one even looked. The other one just turned his face the other way. This one looked, saw the situation, and passed by on the other side. 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he joined it, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. Notice here that it was a Samaritan. So you see, in God, it is not denomination. It is not religion. It is whether you have come to Jesus Christ and you have received the love of God and thereby live by that love. It was a Samaritan here. Not a Levite, not a priest, not a Jew, but a Samaritan. 34. So Jesus said he had compassion. That if, so when so he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? Verse 37, and he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Compassion. There are so many other references in the scripture about compassion. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, Jesus was moved with compassion. In Psalm 86, verse 15, the Bible says, you, O Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in mercy and truth. Blind Bartimaeus understood that Jesus is full of compassion because the component of love is compassion. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, he cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus couldn't resist him because he understood that love is moved by compassion. Jesus showed him compassion. Praise the name of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, do you want to see the power of God blow through you like the mighty wind parted the Red Sea? Then practice compassion by the Spirit of God. Number two component of love is forgiveness. Forgiveness. You must forgive everyone, no matter the offense. You must forgive whoever it is, no matter the offense. This is the highest lie that we're talking about. Oh, I know many people will struggle with this. But do you know that Lord's Prayer that we often pray the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9, we often stop at verse 13. That is not complete. I encourage you from today, read verses 14 and 15. There you will see what the Bible says. Jesus was the one teaching here. He said, if you do not forgive men their trespasses, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Verse 15. 
But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. You are to forgive no matter what the offense is. This is the component of love, the ingredient of love. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48, there Jesus said we should love our enemies. Love your enemies. Hello. Matthew chapter 18, 21 and 22. Peter asked Jesus, he said, how many times should my brother offend me before I stop forgiving him? Is it up to seven times? Jesus said, no, 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 no. I, I, do, I did not say seven, up to seven times. I said up to 70 times, seven times. And you know, seven times 70 is what? 400 and 90, right? Praise the name of the Lord. 490. So if you are able to keep your brother's offense and count it up to that on one offense, then you can go ahead. But what Jesus was emphasizing here is that we must forgive no matter what offense. He demonstrated this while hanging on the cross. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. That is why you and I have received the forgiveness. Despite all our sins, our atrocities, our iniquities, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The Bible says, Come, let us reason together. No matter how dark your sin may be, no matter how red it may be, he said, come, I will forgive. Glory be to God. God demonstrated this to a man called Saul of Tarsus. Jesus visited him and he repented and became the apostle of Jesus Christ. And he said, he was not worthy to be called an apostle because he persecuted the church of Jesus Christ. He killed, he maimed. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. God forgave him. Praise the name of the Lord. Forgiveness at all costs. Number three component is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sacrifice means surrender of self or something. For the sake of someone or for the sake of something else. It means to suffer loss of or give up or renounce or destroy for a purpose. This time, God's purpose. This is what sacrifice means. Praise the name of the Lord. Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 to 20 and 25. Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 and 25. I'd like us very quickly to look at that. It says, Jesus was the one speaking here. It says, if anyone, if anyone des desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, will find it. Brothers and sisters, do you now understand the dimension of love that God has called you to, has called me into? So when somebody beats his chest and say, me, you will see me. <laughs> ah, that person is already very far away from what God is expected of us. Having been given the spirit of love to manifest love. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, deny yourself. Romans 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you, brethren, that we present ourselves as a living sacrifice. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, pleading with us by the mercies of God, that we present our bodies a living sacrifice unto God. 
I want to wrap up as we look at 1 John chapter 3, verses 13 to 19. 1 John chapter 3, verses 13 to 19. And we will take continue next time. So the component of love, you must know this. You must make up your mind to practice these three. These three will help you manifest all the other characteristics of love. First John chapter 3 from verse 9. Whoever has been born of God, First John chapter 3, okay, because of time, let me jump to verse 13, rather, verse 13, please. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Verse 16, by this we know love, because he's, he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Please, is that in your Bible? Jesus' standard is that as he laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. This laying down, first and foremost, is sacrificing, giving up. It may be our rights for the sake of another person. Just because of God. Just for the sake of the kingdom. You can continue to read the rest. This is the standard. Jesus sacrificed himself for us. And he is calling us to sacrifice ourselves for one another. Read that verse 16. Read it in different translations so you can get the, the full meaning. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. He's not calling you to come and die for the sin of another. No, that's not what this means. This is sacrifice to give up for the sake of another because of God. Because of love. To give sacrificially, like we said. To help. So compassion, forgiveness, sacrifice. These are the components of love. If we practice this, we will see the love of God manifest in our lives. And the power of love will give us victory in all areas of life. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. And round off here. If you have helped me and you're struggling with any of this area, there is somebody you have helped, you cannot forgive because you're so bitter about what the person did. I want you to just ask the Spirit of God to help you now. God's Spirit, as our sisters, the two of them shared, will help you. The Spirit of God is the one who pours the love of God in our hearts. Our own duty is to yield to him and to obey God. Make up your mind that these components of love, you will practice, you will leave them. Compassion. Showing mercy unto the one that is in distress and in need. Being sympathetic and helpful, helping those that are in need. Compassion. Forgiveness, no matter what, even your enemies, forgive them. Sacrifice. Giving up. Surrendering all to God, both your own self and for the sake of God to do good to others. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for your word. Lord Jesus, you were speaking and even Peter said, this is a hard saying. The Jews began to move away and you turned to them and said, will you also go away? And Peter answered you and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the word of eternal life. Lord, we thank you for this word of eternal life. 
It is a hard saying. And so we ask for your grace. Lord, I ask for your grace. I ask for your spirit grace. Upon all these, your children, upon me, upon my brothers and sisters, whom you have called to this higher life, that by your spirit grace, oh God, we will live this life and manifest your love as you expect us to live and glorify you. And so, Father God, I pray for that man. I pray for that woman. I pray for that brother. I pray for that sister. I pray for whoever has been offended and has been and has found it difficult to forgive that today, by your spirit grace, let him, let her, almighty God, be able to give up, be able to forgive. And Father, as he forgives, as she forgives, heal him, heal her, and give them victory, O oh God Almighty, over their oppressors in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray that the power of your love will search through our lives. The manifestation of your spirit's grace and power, your anointing, oh God Almighty, will search through our lives. Like when your wind blew upon the Red Sea and parted the Red Sea asunder for your children to walk upon the dry land. That in every challenge, oh God Almighty, in life, as we demonstrate your love, you will part that challenge for us. You will make the mountains become a plain unto us. You will fill up the valleys, oh God Almighty, and you will bring anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God in our lives. You will bring it down. You will give us the victory, oh God Almighty, that you have guaranteed us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Lord God Almighty, I pray that everyone who has heard this word of life, Father God, on that day when Jesus returns, we shall return with him. Whether we are still here physically on earth or we have gone and we will resurrect with Jesus Christ. Resurrect when he comes. Thank you, our Father and our God, for this hope of eternal life, for this promise of eternal life, for this gift of eternal life that you have given to us. And by your love, we shall continue to enjoy that eternal life here on earth and will continue even after this physical world. And all glory be to you. Lord, I pray that by your law, we will fulfill all your will and all your purpose for our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And let the people of God say bigger, amen. We're going to pray uh, to close. Um, yeah, before we do that, let's take the question. Yes, go ahead very quickly. Okay. The question says that God is loving and forgiving Father. Is there any sin that he can't forgive? Is there any what? Any sin that he can't forgive. Did I hear any sin? Yes, sir. Sin? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, very quickly, the Bible talks about sin unto death. The Bible talks about sin against the Holy Spirit that will not be forgiven. So when you're talking about any sin in the Bible, you know it's exactly, it's clearly written. Sin unto death and sin against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven in this world and in the world to come. So I want to move you away from that emphasis of is there any sin? Because that's not God's intent for you. God's intent for you, God's intent for anyone is to come to him and repent of his sins. When you repent of your sin, God will forgive you. Praise the name of the Lord. So I hope that addresses it for you. Let us round off here. Yeah? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for all these your children who have heard your word, that this month of May will be their months of higher grounds. 
every higher ground that they have desired, every next level that they have desired. Almighty God, by your quickening spirit in this month of May, take your children to that place. Thank you, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your children experience the higher ground of love, the higher ground of victory, the higher ground of faith, the higher ground of health, the higher ground of peace and of sound mind, every higher ground, Lord, that they desire. Take them there, and much more than their desires, do what you alone can do. Thank you, our Lord and our God. To you be all glory, to you be all honor, all praise. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters.